we open up the discussion is going to be Ian Hobson. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is, is obviously send a message of solidarity to our members who uh, went back this morning after uh, holding another 48 hour strike and announced that they will be taking a uh, further seven days of action next week. I mean, uh, for those that aren't aware of, of, of the reason why they're on strike, it's, it's to do with the fact that the government announced what they claimed was a living wage, which is like an increase in the minimum wage, which we've christened the gimmick wage. And obviously, the, the, re the reaction of, of most, you know, you know, bad employers has been to uh, cut people's terms and conditions to, to force them to self-fund uh, the minimal increase that the, uh, the, the non-living wage actually had, which is actually pound five less than the real living wage. Um, and I think it's probably the first strike uh, in, in relation to the living wage, but I don't think it'll be the last. Um, but obviously we're here tonight to debate uh, the issue about e the, you know, the, the leaving the EU. I mean, I think most of the speakers that have just been on before me have probably covered uh, probably the, the, the key elements of, of the reasons why, you know, working people need to to, to look at uh, seriously the the, uh, the issue of leaving the EU. I mean, if you was to look at Jeremy Corbyn, for example, and, and what he was offering, I think most people would say, if Jeremy Corbyn's vision of Europe was actually the one on the table, I think a lot of working people would say, actually, that might be something we want to buy into. But unfortunately, that isn't the EU that's actually on the table. The EU that's on the table is the one that David Cameron negotiated, the one that is about uh, demonising and continuing the victimisation of low paid workers. Because part of the deal, if people vote to stay in, will be the reduction and then the, the, the elimination of the rights for low paid workers from, from Europe to be able to claim in-work benefits. They only claim in-work benefits, of course, because they're on such low pay. That means that those people that are coming into the country will now have to find additional jobs to enable them to support the lifestyle or to pay the rent or to buy the food. So now they will be at the mercy of exploitative employers. So much for them standing up for working people across Europe. If that's what the EU means by standing up for working people across Europe, I don't think it's something that working people should want to be involved in. Because when you talk about, you know, the, the TUC's role um, within, within this campaign and their, their, their stance in relation to claiming that the EU has been the protector of workers' rights, as has always been, already been pointed out here, the EU was nowhere to be seen when they were, when they were absolutely attacking the uh, NUM, when they were condemning those miners and their communities, you know, to, to, to the, uh, the life of being on the dole where they were taking all of our work rights away, the EU was nowhere to be seen. And we should never forget that, because that legislation was brought in under a Tory government while we were at the centre of the European Union. Because that's before we actually fell out with the European Union and saw it as an opportunity to divide people and use it for a political tool. At that point, we played a central role and the European Union helped and abetted our government at that time to demonise the NUM and those great, great people in our communities, especially in this particular area. And when the TUC claim that the six million trade union members in this country should support the Remain campaign because of the health and safety, for example, then it needs to look at its own website. Because on its own website, it makes no references whatsoever to the issue of the European Union playing a role in protecting health and safety. It says the health and safety that people enjoy today come about because of the trade unions and the campaigns that we led. So, so much for the European Union being at the forefront of securing our health and safety in the workplace. And then the other thing that they talk about is your meal breaks. They say your meal breaks will go. Well, did you know the first meal breaks in this country were actually given in 1850? I think that was before the EU had even been born, you know, or even contemplated. And again, they talk about holiday rights and people being entitled to paid holidays. Well, they were actually getting them in 1880. The actual Paid holidays for everybody, because in 1880 they were only for skilled workers, so we'll give them that. But in 1939, they came in for all workers. That was 1939. Again, before the justification of the European Union, which came at the end of 1945, and anybody who watches Tony Benn understands how the European Union came about anyway, because of that bloody war. You know? And they talk about the issue that the European Union has kept us out of war. 
most European Union countries are actually involved in NATO. And NATO has been involved in so many wars, it's untrue. You know, look at Africa, look at Iraq, look at, look at all of these countries that we've been at war with. So let's be clear, you know, we might not be fighting each other, although Yugoslavia, I think, was in Europe, I do believe. Um, I mean, you know, Turkey is on about coming in to, to the EU. I believe there's a war just going on on their border too. I mean, so to say that the European Union has kept peace, uh, I think is, is a slight exaggeration. And, and, there's, and there's, you know, I, I would also suggest, you know, that it's, a, it's a, a rewriting of history. Because again, you look at the rights that we have earned in this country, and most of them, as has already been mentioned, the Equal Rights Act. That didn't come about because of the European Union at all. The minimum wage, it didn't come about. Did you know trade unions were campaigning in the 1880s for the minimum wage when they were campaigning for an eight hour day? So when they talk about the Working Time Directive, that's been on the agenda of the trade union movement. And you know, when they brought working rights to working holidays into my factory and the maximum 40 hour a week, I already had that. I think it was a right because my trade union had negotiated for me. You know, yes, I admit that there are some people who were in trade unions that may not have been entitled to that, but all those people in trade unions probably were and probably got more than that. In fact, they also talk about the Acquired Rights Directive. Well, let me tell you, the Acquired Rights Directive is the reason we ended up in striking Hovis. We ended up in striking Hovis because what they did, because the agencies they had to be, uh, you know, have a comparator rate so they could pay them less money than what the actual real workers were on, it gave them the ability to introduce a second generation contract. And when our members wouldn't accept the second generation contract, they made them redundant and brought in zero hour contract workers. So that's what the Acquired Rights Directive did for working people you know, that, that I represent. So let's be clear, the EU has never been a friend of working people. The EU has it enshrined in its constitution that it should be in the pursuit of profit and it should be in pursuit of moving public to private. That's part of its agenda, that's part of its aims, that's part of its aspirations. So let's be under no illusion, it will not defend our NHS, it will not defend our trade union rights, it will not defend people in their communities when they come under attack. And when you look at how, how this government and how the rest of Europe has responded in relation to people, you know, not ha having their, you know, under austerity, which is brought about in the main because corporations have failed to pay their tax, which they're entitled or obligated to do, what we find is that the European Union is the one that's allowed them to set up all of those schemes across Europe, which Juncker from Luxembourg was the forefront of the Luxembourg one, which means that McDonald's can claim it makes all its profits in Luxembourg and nothing in the UK, denying us over here, over, over here more than 1.3 billion in unpaid taxes, which means closing shore starts, it means you know, kids being taught in classes of more than 25, it means that your hospitals aren't being funded, it means the higher exploitation of workers due to the fact that, that, that they now face the, uh, the, the hardship of having benefits cut or being forced into a job which doesn't actually pay them what they should be earning or what they deserve as working people. So when people talk about standing up for the working people in this country, at no time has the European Union ever stood up for us. I would urge you, look at what they've done, look at, look at how we've been treated. We are no better off for being in the European Union. We are much worse off, and so are trade unions, and across the Europe, across Europe, when you look at collective agreements, they have come under attack because, again, that's part and parcel of the objective of the Commission, who's actually enshrined it into another treaty that calls for the removal and the erosion of collective agreements. So thank you for listening to me.